The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. Right now, we have the Dow Industries down 442, NASDAQ off 146, S&P's down 52, gold contract up $9, trading at 15.23 an ounce. You get silver up 21 cents, $17.20 an ounce. Light sweet crude down two bucks, $55.12. You know, it doesn't matter what industry we're talking yeah. about. You're up 200, you're down 200. Oil's up $2, oil's down $2. Gold's down 50, it's up 20. Totally. Notes and bonds, guess what? Oh, man. Consistency. 10-year <laughs> note up 19 ticks, 130.13. 30-year bond up a full point, plus 15 ticks, 164.13. King dollar. King dollar up 74 ticks, trading 97.705. Now, King dollar had volume yesterday, man. King dollar wants higher price. Euro, yours at 111. The yen is out here at 105.98. And the pound is out here at 120 to 1 U.S. dollar. That note and bond market, the uh, refinances went up 34% last week. It's not every day you wake up and the 30-year bond is an all-time low. Sprinkle on top of that, the 10-year and the 2-year inverting for the first time since yeah. 2007. And I had to, like, check my ears. So I was like, that, that is some staggering information when you really digest what that could mean. So... Watch out. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see what let's, it can mean. It mean. Let's put our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade, on the spot. I love it. He likes being in another spot. Not? It let's doesn't matter. What, what you know it? why, folks? Because he knows what defined risk is all about. And if you want to understand defined risk, you want to understand option, option strategies upside down, futures, bottom line, defined risk in this market is totally where it's at. Every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, outstanding program, bottom line, you know, if we, if we go back, just a, you know, a, a quick throwback, if you go back even 10 or 15 years, you never could learn this stuff without paying thousands of dollars. Sure. I mean, there used to be so many option courses at five grand. Guess what? All you have to do is turn on TFNN every day, right? You, you're going to know it all. And you're going to know it from someone that was in the pits, not someone that was reading a few books. There you go. Know. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? I should be charging tuition. You should. That's what I tell the young kids here. You, you know, you know I, what, Kevin? <laughs> the reason I brought it up is that it, there's plenty of folks that didn't realize, I think, that, you know, there's a lot of young folks that this was something that, you know, people were charging five and ten grand all oh, day sure. long for, for three days. Definitely. So they tell me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I've been told. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, and you know, I, I got to tell you, man, yours is ten times better. You know, the, the, <laughs> listen, the, fir the, first, the first time that I got into options, right? I, yeah. I read uh, Larry McMillan's book. I'm going back yeah. to the 90s right Which now. Which might be the most boring book ever written. And cool. let, me, let me tell you something. I, I, Tommy knows the story. I used to throw it off the wall. Yeah, because it'll cure, it'll it, cure your insomnia. Well, I was just, you know. How many formulas are in that book? Right? Just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And yeah, that's what it is. Right? I know. And it's so much easier, folks. Yeah. Just turn it on the TV, hitting the button, you bring it through it. Technology, man, it makes oh, it easier. It does to see it live. You know. So, and, and this market, Kevin, let me tell you, Macy's, poor Macy's. Well, you're uh, going to go shopping, man. You're going to get out there and do some shopping. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm going to put my selfish hat on for a second here and say that has there been a better summer for trading I in the last 10 years? There hasn't. It hasn't. I mean, it, it you know, up. if you think about this from a pure trading perspective, right. markets going up, markets going down, making big moves, volatility moving all over the place. Right. Here's one bright spot we can take from all this market movement is financial institutions, big banks have to be seeing a boost in trading revenue yes. that, that, that's going to come up for next quarter yep. in next quarter's earnings right. so that may be some silver lining in all this because these markets are cranking they are. and moving so and that's got to be a good thing at least long term for some of these firms and as the vix hasn't really been staggeringly high right uh, no i yeah. mean you tommy you, you hit on something r right there for as big as some of these percentage moves are yeah. the vix hasn't really gone to a panic level exactly. at all yeah really I mean, VIX 20 
or VIX 21. Yeah. Where is it now? I'm looking on my board. Like 2049. Yeah. I mean, that's not, you know, no. think about it. That's less than a one and a half percent move. Yeah. yeah. If we go by, our, you know, the rule of 16. Sure. So it's it's elevated. And for August, it's higher than than the average. And it's pretty strong for the summer. But with the moves we're getting, I would expect it to be higher, frankly. What did we get? A thousand point swing last week in the Dow yeah. down yeah. there. We just had a 500 point swing over two days. I mean, it's staggering. Yeah. Yeah. There's, you know, we get some action here, man. I mean, but the real question and the real thing that your viewer should start thinking about and what's going to start creeping into some of the rhetoric and discussions here is Jerome Powell going to move mid meeting? Yeah. In yeah. between meetings. Yeah. I have to chuckle because we've come so far from like where we were because the conversation yeah. was like, yeah, what if, well, what if he comes in, somebody says this morning, I was listening to Bloomberg, and he cuts by three quarters of a point, you know? And I was like, man, we have come so far from like, let's hike. Uh, but yeah. that is the conversation, you know, oh, because yeah. this is right. getting a little dicey. I mean, the bond market, like we started off. And remember, that's not unprecedented. No. It may be no. unprecedented lately right. in the last few years with Janet Yellen and Jerome Pop, but the Fed moved on rates. You know, there were times when the Fed moved on rates midday, no meeting, no real announcement, just a just you a. That you know, to you? Yeah, <laughs> a, a Gr Greenspan and Rubin. I'll never. Yeah, I said that. Yes, I'll never forget that day. Three fifteen in the afternoon, folks, in the middle of the market. And yeah. th this is when the market was. Oh my God, the Dow was probably only at twelve thousand then, or not even. Probably. It less, might have been right? eight thousand. Yeah, who knows? And it was yeah. like down three hundred, and then it ended up being up five hundred. Right. In oh, heart. I remember standing in the GE pit trading and also you're like all right what just happened you know there wasn't cnbc there wasn't all these news programs yeah, right, then right. it was a little ticker tape on the bottom of the uh, b bottom of the screen you're like all right something just happened the world and then you see a little ticker quickly. tape in the trading That's, world there's no yeah doubt, you know and you know there's the the where i'd say, say the volatility is in here we get good six eight weeks maybe longer of uh, heavy trading opportunities man and I still have some earnings coming up and, oh yeah and, uh, walmart yeah. i can't wait to see what happens there Me i mean Wal yeah. walmart you know no doubt that, that that's back from the not back from the dead but you know they they, they, dicey. they, they got that's dicey right they, they, yeah. they can definitely give amazon a run for their money now think you know about I mean? this guys the expected revenue for the quarter for walmart oh boy Around 130 billion. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, we were joking. Wait, is that for the year? No, that's for day. 90 days. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. That is amazing. It is. The mam and you're right. They are. You know, originally when Amazon started and really became uh, significant, you thought because of the way they, you know, their uh, their membership base, that Costco would be their main competitor. Yes. Right, because two right. membership. Uh, companies but really it's been walmart yes that has given them the most uh competition because because they've been able to keep margins low without a membership fee so it's really i mean walmart has been you know the most amazing company in this evolution of retail and yeah. you're starting to see you know it doesn't mean that uh macy's going out of business but they need wholesale change they do man no doubt folks right here 45 minutes from now outstanding program check it out kevin you have a great one a safe one of course we look forward to the program in 45 minutes walmart today guys hold on for the ride baby 130 billion thanks kevin have a great one man. thanks kevin thanks for having me on guys thank you stay right there folks tommy and i come right back if you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. C -c -c Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 444. You get the Nasdaq off 157. S&P's off 55. Let's just go inside the Dow here for a second. And I was like, where is he going to start? There's oh, almost a million places. God, Usually seriously. I might have some idea of what's yeah. moving, and you could almost go anywhere right now. You could. And uh, inside the Dow, so uh, negative points. Goldman 41, Boeing 36, 3M 27, Apple 26. Only one positive is uh, Coke. That's, yeah, uh, and Procter, I guess. Yeah, right, putting up barely. one. And it's kind of across the board, man. You don't it's, see it so often where, you know, there's 15 stocks. They're all adding 14 or more negative numbers. points to yeah, the Dow. That's why numbers. you have the index down almost 2%. But NDX 100, strength versus the weakness out here. Look at this. Only two that are positive. Uh, was that, so was that Coca-Cola in the Dow? Yeah. And now we have uh, Pepsi? Pepsi, They're yeah. the only two. What's, sugar. what's going on with soda? I know. People are still eating sugar. I guess if we hit a refresh, um, recession, they're just going to go for sugary beverages. Yeah. You got Mylan Pharmaceutical off 8.3%. Oh, uh, AMD is down 4.5. Uh, C Trip is down 4.6. Uh, uh, ASL M ASML is down 4.3. That's a chip company also. Big numbers. Uh, yeah, it's, it's... Not small numbers, <laughs> no, as I would say, for sure. They're not. Uh, what were we just looking at? What article? Oh, we, we work. Oh, we work. There we go. Thank oh, you. yeah. So we check this out. Yeah. So this, we work going public, right? I'm yeah. not sure they have even the exact date. They were talking about a lot on, early on Bloomberg this morning. Um, but man, they got some staggering numbers of losses in there. I mean, one of their risk, one of the main risk factors the company highlighted in their publishing and, and you know what they're putting out there as they go public, the ability to achieve profitability at a company level in light of our history of losses. Um, you know, basically, they're telling investors, we've lost money for a while. We're going to continue to lose money. We're going to struggle to reach profitability in the near term. Um, Look at this. The, the company has described some of its more scrutinized expenses, including a flashy contest series that costs more than $40 million? As a critical Am I reading means, that correctly? You, I think you are. <laughs> um, we'll click on it in a second because I'm curious myself. And let's see. So in an unconventional move, there will be three classes of common stock. Oh, they, they really got to take people to clean this. A shares with one vote yeah. plus high vote stock in the form of class B and C shares. I wonder, what do they get? Like a 100,000 votes per, you know, that's what right. you can do. Oh, you yeah. can say every class B share gets 100,000 votes or something. And immediately that's how Mark Zuckerberg controls Facebook completely, even though he doesn't own 51% of the outstanding shares. Right. 
Uh, so the office rental company listed an offering size of one billion, which is typically a placeholder. So they're going to revise that. They're targeting a sale of about three, a sale of 3.5 billion in September. So it's coming, man. Next month, we're almost That'd there. That'll make the second biggest IPO, topped only by Uber. You yeah, say, well, and you, we know how Uber went, right? Yeah. In fact, I hit saw one of the tigers. Low, low uh, all in the time den. low. Yeah. yeah. So if we pull up Uber, look at this. There we go. Uber. What did they go? All time low today. They went. Okay. public at 45. So now, shave more than 20% off that price level. Now, and when we say 45, this is important for folks to, to wrap their head around. That just means 45, if you happen to get it, the, oh, look at that. The day I went public, it never went over 45 either. Oh, that was a real bad yeah. IPO. Oh, yeah. they just, I actually recall that they just got a tick. And I, we remember talking wow. about how they at least had to trade it up to the IPO wow. price. Because that is a big difference. You know, the story would have been it didn't even reach it. Ah, they touched it. So, or it so hit it, 50 or 60. Sometimes it happens that, you know, you, you see what the IPO goes up, but the day it, it goes out, it goes out higher and sure. then gives it up. This one, I knew it was out of the no. gate at lower prices, and they actually have to push it up a little bit, make sure it touched that 45 mark. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah, so. I mean, they're just priced for a huge valuation. You know, a great company, but just priced for a huge valuation. And you, you got Lyft competing with you. Um, let alone if other players start to get into that market oh, yeah. for ride sharing. Um, Lyft. Tesla has talked about their plans, you know, whether you believe what Elon Musk says or not. Yeah. Um, the Lyft. plan is to have those Teslas driving around picking you up. Same deal. So Lyft went public at 72, and Pretty this is trading 55. That's a very similar, like 20% haircut. And now, see, this is the difference. Now, look at this. Lyft went public that day, but guess what? It, it really opened at 78 and went to 88. Yeah, and if you recall, Lyft was ahead of Uber, so the market That's right. figured out. That's right. <laughs> That's oh. why Uber had oh. more trouble, because right. by the time Uber had come out, oh. um, Disaster. the market had already figured out there was more, there wasn't as much exuberance. The people are taking to the cleaners. Yeah, so, yeah, so they yeah. weren't about to do the same thing with Uber. They learned their lesson on Lyft, and so Uber, that's, they haven't even, you know, they touched it to the penny, and that's it. Bye-bye. Let's go take a look at the dollar index. So we had, and we got our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstack, coming on today, which is great. Talking Forex, 40 yeah. past the hour. You got, uh, so we're up uh, 154 ticks. You get 9,200 contracts. Now, yesterday we came in with contract volume. So that gets it that, guess what? Once you're over this 97,715 again, it's like, okay, game up to the top again. You can yeah. see that spike. A spike, 27,000 contracts. You know, I actually expected to see more action in the dollar when I was jumping through everything today. As yeah, in, I went to the markets, I went to oil, gold, yeah. and I was like, oh man, I wonder what the currency is doing. No, well, I, it, it could have been a little more intense yeah. um, with what you have happening. Oh, there's no, with look, the bonds, too, excuse me. So yes. I went through all of it, and then you go to the currencies, right. and it's like, oh man. And, and then you're, uh, you can bit. see that's right when we get on. I saw the, the, yeah. euro, the euro took a dive, folks. Yeah. Um, if we put this longer. Well, I, I guess this is going to go against, we had strength down here, the, what is that, that bottom is 111.05, we've hit 111.44. Yeah. So, there's, yeah. there's a lot of moving pieces. What, what's intriguing of last night is the um, aspect of, it wasn't like there was a lot of news that just moved this market down. So, that's telling me, folks, that we're going south now. This is a, I would agree. You know, that, you know it's, 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 it's a sell-off. Um, and I think as those headlines come out about the bond market, yeah. that, that is the news. But what made the bond market go to all-time lows, right? right? Nothing staggering, exactly. Right. And, you right. know, pretty. Yeah. So, crude oil. We got the EIA numbers coming out at 1030. We're trading basically at 55 right on the dot. Man, we mentioned it. Talk about some volatility, right? You back things up to yesterday, just for some context. Yeah. Early yesterday morning, we're trading at 54.23. You trade up more than $3 by noon, practically, right? To 57.43, and now we're down $2.50. Right. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of premium and where these line up. So let's check out what kind of... Because they had a small build last night. Okay, for and the API. it was 3.2. Nice. But the go it got hit immediately. Like that, it okay. <laughs> So this might work out well that we're near $55. We're going to be looking, when we're trying to set up a volatility trade, right, you'd be trying to basically, it's equatable to buying a, putting a call right at the money. Yes. That's what you're looking for. So we're looking for $55 maybe on some of these that line up. The 11 a.m.s are a little bit off. I was hoping. There we go. Perfect. The 12s. The reason why I knew they might move is just because they've been setting every time as this has been cascading down. So. 55 to 5650. These are the noon expirations. You have a buck 50 to the upside. Now the bullish one's going to have eight pennies of intrinsic That's nice value. Though. Yeah. Not bad, right? No. You're paying 33 for the one with about eight to nine pennies of intrinsic value. If you want exposure to the downside as well, this one's going to be a little bit cheaper because it's out of the money by eight pennies. 
paying 24 you're looking at 57. 57. A little bit more expensive than usual, but when's the last time we looked at this market and you had almost $3 of upward movement and downward movement almost in the last 24 hours? Uh, and let's just see how the dailies line up. Maybe we can find 55. Nah, so that's gonna have 55.50. That'd be a little bit out of the money. And unfortunately, that's gonna have 54.50. So the nudes would be your option. Not bad. And again, you could always take one side or the other. Right. You know, if you're positional right. and you really had a bias, if you're just looking for volatility, you can take both, but not a bad trade as well. I mean, you know, you're going bullish. Not with the type of volatility we've had yeah. right now. You're paying 24 cents of premium, right. essentially, when you have an hour and a half and that crude market about to come out with the numbers. 877-927-6648. We have the Dow right now down 410. NASDAQ off 146. S&P's down 51. Tommy and I come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow uh, off 407. You get the Nasdaq one, down 147. S&P's off 51. Let's see. They're a little slow with the news. Here we go. Okay. Rising 1.58 million barrels. Uh, that might be more than they thought. API did have a build of about 3.7 last night, but we saw the Bloomberg they estimate be a drop, come in a, a decline four, yeah. of 420. And let's check back to the market, see how the market's reacting, pull up the chart. And a little quick reaction, but nothing too staggering. It did spike, and man, this is so quick. It was up there at 55.36 for a heartbeat, 
55.16, we're coming in at about 55.08, so nothing too dramatic. And checking back to uh, the numbers, gas inventory is falling 1.41, and there's the full line. So the median estimate was a decline even greater than that of 2.5, so a lot more crude, about 4 Look million barrels than they thought. Wow. Gas decline of 1.4, estimate decline of 1.1, so less gas. You have distillates down 1.9, the estimate was for an increase of a million. And uh, Cushing minus 2.5, pad 3 minus, uh, excuse me, plus 1.7. And then you have imports and refinery crude inputs, imports, uh, excuse me, inputs as well. So let's see. Yeah, it's not holding. Yep. No action. No action at all. And of course, if you were going to take one of those trades, the last thing you'd want was exp expiration at noon to 55. But we got an hour and a half, man. Give that, give that crude contract a little time and faith, and you might see some action. No doubt. So let's go over to the XLE, because the XLE is basically leading the, uh, the march lower. Yeah, here you go. It's like, yeah, that hasn't been able to get a bounce. You know, the four months ago, you had $68. You're at $57. you are going into the lows that were established last week. That was uh, $57.16. you are at $57.26. We've hit $57.03. Yeah, and this, <laughs> this is just... Like saying, hey, it wants to go back to its friends in December. Now, this is going to be intriguing, folks, and this is why. I, see, I expect that we're going to make it back to December lows in the S&P. Now, we're a long way from those right now. We're making our way down to the June lows. But because of the way you can see the XLE, we're already back there. You know, the high of that low is $58 and one penny. Well, we've hit 57.03 today. So that's going to be a heads up in general because if that's what, if oil gets back there, if the XLE gets back there, the probability goes higher. The market wants to get back there, and then the next one to watch, which is surprising actually, is at the banks. The banks, you know, right now we're at, that's the June one, I think. Yes, yes. Yeah. So right now we're basically eating into the June bar. You know, that top of that is twenty six twenty nine or twenty six thirty seven, uh, but what is still st sticking out here is this. Uh, let me pull this back. It's this way. You know, we'll have to first tackle the June bar, but that December bar is a pretty big bar out there. Yeah. So it really hasn't, you don't have a decisive break yet, but, you know, you're getting close to it, you know, meaning a trend line break, sure. you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. that's, and, and Berkshire, Berkshire is the first one. This is what is, so watch this. Berkshire is one of the first ones to get much closer to this. And that's, this is the highest weighting structure inside the XLF. And you can see this, this is interesting. So the June, May one is 197.07, and you're below it. And so that does put game on, you know, that December is open. And, you know, little by little what is happening is that you get a few of these sectors making it down into that level. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Because watch this, folks. This is... The S&P is, I mean, a long way away from this. If this oh, S&P goes down sure. here, this is going to be pretty intense because... When we're talking about, the number I'm talking about down here is like 2524. And then yeah. the high of that is what, 2520. What are you, what are you talking about? Oh, 2346. Yeah, yeah, it moved, yeah. And then 2520. And we're at 2875. Yeah. So. It's like a 20% yeah, tank. That, that'd be pretty intense, you know. I'd say uh, so. The, the first level, you know, is going to be this June level, which is 2728. Um, but guess what? When you wake up in the morning and there's not much that happened last night, and your S&Ps are down 45 points, that's how you get there. Well, and you, you got to be listening when the 10-year and 2-year invert. There's a yeah. reason why. you got to yeah. be listening when the 30 years at an all-time low. There's a reason why. Yep. For sure. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. So, hey, let, let's, let me go look at a couple of these housing stocks because the... Okay, so Toll Brothers is down 57 cents. That's no big deal. Lennar... Down 87 cents. Let me pull this up. One of them have earnings this week, next week. I think they have coming up. Okay, so let's take a look. No, let's... they've already done it. How about Toll or then maybe KB? I was just looking yeah. at these. Oh, there you go. There you go. So yeah. next week. So next this Tuesday. is good. That's Toll Brothers. That's going to be next week. They're going to be looking for $1.7 billion, 83 cents to the bottom line. What's going to happen with these builders, the market's going to be looking for, do you have a, how big is the backlog? Sure. You know, um, you know the... We saw what happened when Macy's has... not Part of that was an inventory build. Yeah. Five billion dollars, I think, in inventory, right. Macy's. Right. Hey, could you sell something instead of putting it in your storage? 
Seriously, man. So the houses, I mean, even more dramatic when you're talking about items that are hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's to right. To build that inventory. That's right. Well, congratulations right. for building it. You're going to sell it anytime soon? That's right. <laughs> right, right. Well, what I mean by the backlog is that, is that, like, you already bought a house, but it's not delivered yet. Okay. Do you know what okay, I mean? That that's, well. that's, that's a, yeah, that's what they're going to be looking for. Yeah. Uh, and what we'll have, we'll see what will end up happening. We, it, the number that I was looking at this morning, it was saying that the refinances were there, right? Okay. But not, not. New mortgages. I can believe it, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. the refinance market, folks, went up 34% last week. But in that same article, so you can find the, the new sales hadn't. Yeah, but that, rates, yeah, and it's, rates have been low for a while, right? Yeah. As in, if you were going to be a buyer because rates have been low, yeah. maybe you've already hit that mark. Yeah. You know, did, yeah. did you really, versus a refinance, that's most of the time just a simple phone call. It, versus you're not buying a house. You know, it's simple math. And, and I've actually been getting low, um, calls from my mortgage person. Right. With messages just in the last two days, so it's probably hit did that. Did Bud, Bud call you? No, oh, no, another, he's not. Another, he's okay. not yeah, because got, they bought my mortgage through. Okay, so, okay. Um, yeah, right, right. But uh, just getting phone calls, so it's probably maybe it reached the level because I had a pretty good rate. Right. Maybe maybe they know my rate, they know right. where it's at, they know where they can offer me. Simple math. The, Boom, so done. so pictures. Tommy and I know great mortgage broker. Yes. I had I had lunch with them uh, when what day is today? Monday. Today is Wednesday. Wednesday. So it was last week. Okay. Uh, Friday. Friday. There we go. And uh, they do what you just said. So watch how this works, folks. What ends up happening is that it, whoever has your your, your loan, yes, uh, they know or even had it. Okay. Sure. They, right. know, they know the math. Yeah. They know what you're at. And so what ends up happening on a like on a, some of these mortgages, you know, especially when you're not taking a cash out of it, right? Yes. It's an automatic. What Bud explained to me, it's an automatic. All as they they do a, a, a light credit on you. And, and what that means is a light credit. He says you just want to see if the if mortgage has been paid. The mortgage is paid. So picture this. Picture that if you were at 4.25 or something. Yep. And they can offer it now at 3.75, right? Yep. The bottom line is that you just do the deal yep. and that's it. Yep. Now, listen to this one. This gets intriguing. If you're a veteran out there, right? I didn't know this. Um, what happens is this. So when you do that loan, they can still um, get some fees inside it, right? Okay. If you get a VA loan, okay. right, they can't put fees on top of that. Nice. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. So no. So if you get a VA loan, and let's say you're at 4.25, and now they can give you a 3.75, I'm sure there's some kind of fees, but there's not the point fees. I got you. That's there's some it, discretionary, whatever there, there's there's extra There's not the fees. vague on top of it. Yeah. You know, so. It's regulated. It so is. So that they it's, keep them as yeah. low as they can, right. probably covering whatever cost, but no, nothing unnecessary. Right. That we know they're all yeah. unnecessary in a Tran regular Non-transparent. Right, exactly. Reading, reading those HUD statements, folks, <laughs> that, that's a class in you itself. You need a degree for that. You do, man. Yeah. <laughs> Stay right there. Tommy and I are coming right back. Dow. Dow's down 455. Nasdaq's up 162. S&P's down 57. We'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Dow, Dow is down 460. Nasdaq's up 165. S&Ps are up 58. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Cakes, that as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Don't forget, folks, you can check out Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlocked.com. That's forex-trading-unlocked.com. And, you know, we were just talking about mortgages, and you can see how these um, companies work. You know, the bottom line is that they had to hear us talking about mortgages because as soon as we pulled up Teddy... <laughs> At forex trading unlock, guess what? Rocket mortgage. Quick and loans, they're hitting Quick us up. Loans. There we go. They're listening to us, Teddy. They, got, they, they got, are big data's everywhere. Big right? data. I'm said, telling man, you, they're, they're spending money right now. They're calling me. They're doing everything. Yeah. We, we were just going through mortgages, Teddy, and we yeah. pulled up there. I says, look at that, man. I said, hey. you know, the rates are low enough. They're calling me to refinance. <laughs> they know the math. We went through it. We pull up forex trading unlocked, and uh, boom. There you go. Boom. That makes sense. So hey. we get action, no doubt, right? We certainly do. We certainly do. You know, it's kind of funny. We had a lot of um, swing trading things and a lot of news uh, over the past couple of weeks that we've talked about. And I think today is the first time we're not going to be really talking about central banks or anything like that, which is kind of nice. Um, what's very interesting is I think that we're coming into a period where it's showing how the U.S. dollar is a very reluctant bull. Yeah. That, um, it's there's nothing that we're doing in the U.S. that's really making the dollar strong. It's just that the whole world is doing everything to make themselves weaker against us. It's just like this morning, right when we started the program, that euro took a dive, man. Uh, you know, the, the dollar index had some volume yesterday, so it's like, okay, someone was buying it. But that euro just took a dive. I was saying to Tommy, yeah. is that going to be, is Brexit on the, you know, I mean, what is that about? Do you know what I mean? This is that was a quick dollar trading higher, too. They're both, you know, everything, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Quick. Well, the economic numbers have been pretty bad that have been coming out of Germany and France and stuff like that. So they're plagued with the with the definitely um, economic fundamentals right now in the okay. EU. Okay. Um, okay. And then Brexit, we know that obviously a hard Brexit is the best thing we can hope for, if anything, on October 31st. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think it's going to happen. And the and the trend, and that's the one thing I think what's giving the dollar index is the biggest lift right now is that the pound and a lot of other currencies actually are eroding against the dollar. But you look at the yen, Tommy. I know you love the yen. Yes. That that market right now, we know that the interest rate variable is is pretty much stable with that. You know. So um, as far as that's concerned, that's the only currency I think that's going to remain a bull against the dollar right now for. For, uh, quite some time. I don't think it's going to change either, which is kind of ironic, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you know trying to trying to figure out the. I mean, the yen looks to me like it really is going to try to go after ninety nine. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's that banging in. You know, that flash crash down there. You know, it's like okay, it was that one hundred four eighty seven was hanging out there forever. Well, guess what? We hit the one hundred five five. So it's like okay, sure. that that baby evidently is game once again. Um, I think any rally in the yen is one you have to sell right now. Okay. Any U.S. 
seller yet and you have to sell the rallies right now for yeah. sure so and, and i think it's going to be the one that's going to take the lead going into the rest of the year because we already know that with the eu i mean look at how the euro has been trading for the past six months it can't even though it's looking a little bearish today it can't seem to catch a break or a rally no matter what you know so the pound's the one that's in the free fall that's not going to end and i think actually we might see the pound continue to trade lower up a year from now it could keep this uh trend going sure. boy when you take a look I, you know i get a, a long term well to 2016 with the euro up here man they've really lost some big value man i mean you know it, look at that it, i just I just put it back uh, 10 years, uh, 10 mm -hmm. right? And, you know, if you're, if you're owning those currencies, you go from 150 you have less to 110. Wealth. 150 yeah, to right. 110, it's right. a real deal. That's, sure. a big, that's a big number, man. Yeah. And well, right. I know we don't trade the Argentina peso, but how about that yesterday? Oh my God, yeah. that, that's, <laughs> that's crazy, man. Yeah, well, they have all kinds of other issues as it is, sure. you know. Right. So that's where, and that's where, like, you look at the major currency crosses. I trade all mostly predominantly only major currency crosses. Sure. When you start to get into those exotics, that's when you start to see some crazy things that happen when you have issues like what's going on right now. Yeah, no, I don't know what someone in that country, what do you put your money into? Like, not, not, not the paper, that's for sure. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Not the paper. Well, over there, you know what's going on? They're going into cryptocurrencies. Which, yeah. Tom, we bring that up. That, that, that totally yeah. makes sense. That you know what's interesting about that? That's the first time that even in my own head that it totally made sense that cryptocurrencies. Because I says, hey, the the probability seems much less that the crypto is going to lose value versus what those yeah. those peso did. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You got better odds with Litecoin than you do with the, with the pair, with their own peso. Seriously, that's, that's amazing. That really is amazing. Yeah. And so, what you know, what's going to be interesting, guys? I think that people need to pay attention to um, is that the uh, the South Koreans with the Japanese right now, okay, um, they're starting to stir there. And I think that if this thing doesn't start to get kind of mediated within the next like couple weeks, um, that's going to become an issue going into the fourth quarter, and that could start to cause a lot of shakeups in uh, Asia as well. Now, tell me what you're talking about. Then, are we talking about a currency war or? or well, it's a trade war and a currency war okay. against uh, South Korea and uh, Japan. So they're oh, not necessarily friendly to begin with. Okay. And it seems like um, I was actually just talking earlier this morning with somebody. I'm like, I think we need to take all the world's leaders and send them all back to kindergarten for one year. Yeah. Nothing happens for one year because nothing happens anyhow right now. And then see if they can come to the table next year. You know, great, I great mean, idea, man. It, it's it's seriously, and that's what's going on with Japan and uh, South Korea. And now you also have the Chinese numbers that are weakening and blah blah blah. While you have other markets that are thriving, the last thing they need is an intra uh, intra zone trade zone tariff war going on. You know, so that could really start to change, and that'll affect ours our tr our trade as well. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there's huge amounts of factories in South Korea. I mean, it's, you sure. know, before sure. China come around, South Korea was the number one, you know, I mean, remember it used to be Japan, then it was South Korea, and then, right. of course, China opened up, and, you know, China took not all of it, but uh, the bulk of it. But, yeah, there's no, there's no doubt there. That's pretty intense, man. Yeah. It's a powder keg brewing. Yeah. I, well, you know what, and I've said this many times, you know, like, you start a fight, and it seems that the longer the fight goes on, you forget what the beginning of the fight's even about. And now there's lots of power. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And, it's, and it's like, okay, now how do you get out of it? You know what I mean? It's like, and, and of course, everyone, like when you're getting beaten up, everyone wants to stop. Oh, I hope someone breaks up this fight, man. Do you know every, what I mean? Everyone wants to save face, <laughs> yeah, too, right? I know. Yeah, but you know, if you're getting, oh, a, if you're getting a beat, if two of you are getting a beat, Let's it's like, oh, please, someone break this fight up, man. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, who's going to I don't break? think anyone's going to step in to mediate this no, fight. Yeah, it's, right. It's, exactly. Different it's animal. Happen. Yeah, different yeah. animal. So, and. Um, uh, you know this uh, this S and P uh, this thing is getting accelerated down, man. We get 60 uh, points right now on the way down. So. All the markets down at least two percent, and it is not even 11 a.m. Yeah, and you know you're in a, you're in a, a unique spot, Teddy, because what I've seen in markets in general, when mm -hmm. markets really go south, it's normally normally a currency move that really shocks markets. So it's going to be intriguing here to like, okay, what is hanging out here? Do you know what I mean? Is it Sure. And what's going to happen when the currencies actually start to spark a real move? Yeah, right. Oh my God. Listen, folks, every trading day, you can check them out at 
forex-trading-unlock.com. It's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, you have a great week, a safe week, and of course, we look forward to speaking to next Wednesday. Thanks, gentlemen. You guys have a good week. Thank you. you too, Teddy. Thanks, man. Stay right there. Tommy and I are coming right back. Dow's down 490. Nasdaq's off 171. S&P's are down 61. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 500. Nasdaq's up 173. S&P's off uh, 61. And let's, I want to go into the bond market and show you something for a second because we finally figured out, I finally figured it out anyway. Because I was, you know, when Tommy was saying that the, the 30 was at all-time lows, I'm saying yeah. to myself, well, I know the price of the 30 is not, but this is what it is, folks. And so when I'm bringing up bonds here. And I think you went US 1. When you, yeah, because you needed yeah. the generic one. What happens is that I'm bringing up the futures. So the last time that we were an all-time low, what you did have is that the futures price was higher. That future price is 177.11. Now that makes sense because this is what the deal is. The future, of course, is that if your momentum's on the way up, well, they're paying more, like in this particular case, this is the future in September. Um, so they were paying more for that bond in the future. Now, if you bring up the TLT, and, or you just, if you were trading just a pure flat 30 year, you to me, the bottom line is that you would see that you're breaking all time highs. And like in today. Price for all time lows on yields. Exactly. So, yep. so, and that's exactly what the TLT has done because the TLT is the 20 year plus. And what you're going to see 
is that this is good. this is a decisive break, by the way, of the TLT. Yeah, that monthly is crazy. You know, you, you have the all-time high was 143.62. We're at 145.12. And to zoom in on that, I think I have it up. So this is the same chart, just a, a daily for yep. the TLT. And I was saying, man, so July 31st, we were trading at 131.66. You're up basically $14. That's more than 10%. That's like 11%, right? In, 11 in days. bonds right. in 11 trading days. Three, six, nine, 10, 11. That's a percent a day. I, you know, what happened to like uh, calmness and, you know, no volatility in bonds, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We got our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks, TD Meritrade, coming up next. Then our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Yeah, go get him, folks.